FPS is one of my favorite genre, especially when it's fast and movement based, where everything is high speed. Ultra Kill, Devil Daggers, Doom and lots of others are immense inspirations, and I've been wanting to make my own FPS for a long time. I've avoided it because I knew it would be difficult and a lot of work, and I wasn't ready to commit to such a big project. But in December, when I saw the 70 FPS jam, I thought I might give it a go. I wasn't motivated at the time to work on other things, and I thought it could be a great break. When thinking about making an FPS, I was immediately in inspired to make something around concrete environments with a retro aesthetic. It was the first time in month I was really excited about the game idea, so I finally decided to give it a go. After brainstorming with the community live on Twitch, I started implementing the foundations for the FPS. The goal is to have a fast FPS set in a cold and concrete environment with a retro low poly aesthetic, both because I think it looks cool and also because it's much more feasible as an indie during a game jam. I go with hitscan for the main shooting mode to give the player an immediate feedback and also because the second shooting method is going to be projectile based to balance things out. I quickly got the movement I'm looking for, a base speed that is quite high with a jump and a dash going in the direction of the camera. That way you can dash on the floor or use it as a jump or a complement to the jump. Already moving around and shooting walls is satisfying, so I feel I'm on the right path. I then add a rocket shot on the right click. The goal is to provide an alternative shooting method with drawbacks. It's projectile based, but it deals damage in an area when it explodes. It will use all of your ammo, so you can't spam it too easily. I also think about the ability to shoot the rocket in the air with the gun, that way you can make it explode before it touches anything. Yeah, I bought a green screen, so... I need to try to use it. I hope the editing me is going to do something with that. Moving in an empty world is fine for a while, but it's supposed to be a shooter, right? So I work on the first enemies, which are the flying ones. They have two great advantages to them. One, they're relatively easy to make because you don't really need complex animations to go with their movement, especially in a game jam. The second advantage is that the code for the movement is pretty straightforward, at least to get the enemy moving in a basic way. I simply coded a steering behavior, allowing the enemies to go towards the player, but with a limited steering angle and force. This is important to avoid the enemy doing a straight 180 if you dash behind them. It's a good way to give an advantage to the player to dodge enemies and can be used later to add weak points. It's a naive implementation, but adds doing the job and can be improved with other behaviors such as obstacle avoidance. The truth is that by using move and slide, the flying enemies slide off obstacles, so the avoidance is already there in a way. After making the first enemy, I want to have something on the floor and also more tanky. The flying enemies don't have a lot of health, so they're quite easy to kill, even if they move a bit fast. The goal with the tank is to have an enemy with more health, so it adds to the overwhelming feeling when there's a lot of enemies. They're not a direct threat as they move slowly, but they can take space and require lots of bullets or two rockets to get killed. I initially make the tanks move using the same code as the flying enemy, but with gravity to make sure they're on the floor. But it doesn't work. The tanks easily get stuck behind walls and it's making them really uninteresting. In the end, I'm using the navigation server to compute the path they should take and it works much better. It's the first time I'm using the navigation server 3D and honestly it's not too bad. Generating the map is quite easy and the only tricky part is setting some values to make sure the tanks move correctly. The third enemy I implement is a sniper. The idea is to add a challenge to the player to make sure they can't just run away from the flying enemies forever without any problems. The snipers are created to be put higher in the levels to incentivize the players to use verticality, but also to force them to stay alert and move fast to avoid getting shot. The sniper targets you as soon as it sees you, and after a small time will engage the about to shoot state to let you know that you're going to get shot. You have to prepare and hide before the shot actually happens or dash at the right time to avoid it. Alerting the player is a real challenge and I'm not sure what I implemented is enough. I'm simply drawing a line between the sniper and the player and the line changes color depending on the state of the player. I'm taking inspiration from Rollerdrome for the sniper targeting as I think it really works well in this game. Obviously Rollerdrome is a third person game so it's easier to see if you're getting targeted. The obvious problem with such a technique is that you won't see a sniper targeting you if it's behind you. I'd say to see it as a feature, forcing you to look around and mentally map where the snipers are during the wave. I guess it could be made easier by showing a marker on screen like 
games often use when you get shot. Even with this small problem, the behavior works well to make the player fear the incoming shots. It's especially true when you have lots of snipers. I still think the sniper could be made more interesting, but I'm not sure how. I feel like they're too easy to avoid if you keep dashing everywhere. I want to have a fourth type of enemy that would spawn smaller enemies. The idea is to have an enemy that is not an immediate threat, but you still want to get rid of it to avoid dealing with the spawned enemies. I just don't have a lot of time left, so I decide to scrap it and focus on turning what looks like a prototype into an actual game with models and textures and stuff. For that, I hop into Blender and start working on the flying enemy. I'm kinda rusty after not having touched Blender for a while, but it quickly comes back. For texturing, I decide to go retro low res, so I'm grabbing textures online and I'm crushing them down to 128 pixels. After some tweaking in Photoshop, I'm able to have things that look quite cool. I said it was coming back quickly, but I'm still taking ages to model and texture the enemies, so unfortunately I decide to scrap animations, and I could still do some of it in the engine. The modeling and texturing process, while time consuming, is soothing in a way. It's a nice change from coding and I really enjoy the texturing part. Honestly, because you crush the textures to a very low resolution, anything can be turned into something that looks good, I think. And of course, seeing your models in-engine finally replacing that sphere or cube you've been shooting for the past hours is really satisfying. It's kind of like this moment in TV shows when they reveal the remodel of a house or whatever. You go from something that looked really bad to an amazing, or at least decent, result. And that is utterly satisfying. I didn't really talk about it much, but I want a dark ambience for the game. I'm basically making heavy use of post-processing to turn the game from this to that. I'm making the world darker, applying some color grading, crushing down the colors with posterization, and finally crushing down the resolution too, to get that retro aesthetic. To make sure we can still see something, I have lights on enemies, but also big ones attached to the player itself, making sure we can see in front of us, but not too far. If you're interested, I put the jam version of this game source code on Patreon, and you can access it if you're a supporter. It helps me a ton, and hopefully it gives you something back. Supporters also had access to this video in early access, and ad-free. As satisfying as it was to look at my beautiful models and games, I still have to finalize the game loop. At that point, I'm still simply spawning a bunch of enemies to test things out, but there's no proper waves and level system. It's a bit of a pain to work on. I don't know if there's a known way of doing that, so I end up simply defining exactly what kind of enemies and how many of them are going to be spawned per wave. To make it less rigid, I just sprinkle some spawners on the level and choose some of them randomly to decide where to spawn my enemies. In the end, I feel like this system works well. I guess balancing can be a bit of a challenge though, but it's good enough for a game jam. As you've probably seen until here, level design is... How do I say? <laughs> Non-existent? And well, my goal is to have more verticality. The truth is, 7 days to make an FPS is quite short, and I don't really have time for that. So for the jam version, the game is lacking level design. I simply place a few blocks here and there just to say, and also to give a platform to the snipers, but that's it. Sometimes you just have to accept that things won't be perfect, especially in a game jam. I guess the problem with me is I accept too easily. <laughs> But of course, I want to go back to that, and that's exactly what I'll do after the jab. And if you want to learn how to make your own 3 FPS with God of War, I've got something cool for you. Let me present to you Quiver, today's sponsor. It's an online platform for tutorials, assets, and developer services. And with them, you too can learn how to make an arena shooter from scratch. With their 14 hours in-depth course, they'll gal you through the entire process, covering everything you need. 3D fundamentals, working with assets, FPS movement, gun mechanics, particle systems for epic bullet effects, enemy pathfinding, 3D animations, and lighting techniques. And here's the cherry on top, an exclusive asset pack designed just for this course. But wait, there's more, I've got a special coupon for you. Because who doesn't love a discount, right? Use the coupon code Mr. Elliptic, which gives you 20% off the first year of subscription. So what are you waiting for? Dive into the world of God of War with Quiver and watch your game development skills soar. Don't forget to use the coupon code for an exclusive discount and check out the link in the description. Thanks to Quiver for sponsoring this video. I continue working on Beton Sanglant for a while here and there to fix stuff that was missing and also make some improvements after the jam is finished. I mostly work on juice like adding sound effects, VFX and particles. I add fire effect when you explode your rocket on the floor, 
but also blood particles coming out of the enemies, and my favorite, body parts when they explode. The best part is they're physics based, so you can shoot them or simply bump into them. I really like when games are juicy, and I want my games to feel like they're responding to what you're doing as a player. I also take the time to work on better level design, I'm still not sure it's enough, but at least there's something now. The levels have way more structure and more verticality. Also, as you progress through the game, the levels shrink in size but become taller. This will hopefully make it harder and force the player to be constantly moving but also seeking height. This new level design is showing me that the enemies are too simple though. The flying ones can still navigate fine, but now the tanks are kinda useless and they are easily avoidable using height. Maybe it's okay though and they should just serve as a way to force the player to go higher. Let me know what you think. I've been thinking about enemies for a while, and I really think I should make more of them if I want to go further with this idea. Speaking of going further, let's discuss where to go next with Beton Sanglant. As you saw, this project was really fun, but it's still a bit far from what I want. So where to go next? I love this project, and I'm thinking of maybe turning it into a full release? It's something I'm a bit afraid of because I know there would be a ton of work to put it to a commercial standard. The past years have been packed with incredibly good FPS and I think the standards are quite high nowadays. It's part of the reason why I've been thinking about doing an FPS for so long but didn't do anything. To make the game more interesting, it first needs more content overall. More enemies but also better ones with varied behaviors to push the players to move fast and use the verticality of the levels. I would also need more levels but again specifically better designs. Making interesting levels that are easy to move through with cool gaps and structures would really improve the experience. I was thinking of adding hazards like pool of lava or toxic wastes, something to keep the player on their toes and again to encourage more verticality. As I was saying, my enemies feel very limited, especially with the new level design. I think I can change that quite easily though. First of all, I could turn some of the tanks into spawning enemies, again to make them more annoying and encourage the player to go get them fast. I think my flying enemies could also have a variant that would be shooting small projectiles. Again, it's an easy twist to add to an existing enemy. To continue on this idea, snipers could also be turned into assassins or something. They could teleport near you or try to attack you if you don't kill them fast enough. They could flee and hide waiting for their next attack. The idea with such an enemy is to create something that won't be very limited by the level designs and the verticality. I think overall adding more flying enemies is the way to go. I also think I'd like to have bosses. I really enjoyed the change of pace in games where you have to fight a boss. It's like a challenge to see if you've learned the mechanics of the level you just played. A good boss fight is also memorable and can leave a long-lasting impression on players. I love the feeling you have when you first see a huge boss and you don't know how you're going to defeat it. But after many deaths, you learn how to approach the fight and the feeling you get when you finally beat it, it's just incredible. I'm thinking about you, Millennia. And I have never known defeat. Never known defeat. I'm quite happy with the current look and the different effects I created, but there should always be more juice. I would really want the experience to be incredibly satisfying, so adding more juice everywhere would be part of the program. One thing I didn't do but I really wanted to explore is adding a special mechanic to the game. Ultra Kill is one of my biggest inspiration, and in this game you have the coin flip. You can throw a coin up in the air and if you shoot it, your bullet bounces off the coin and will hit an enemy. It's a nice change of pace from just shooting the enemies and it's an interesting trade-off for the player. I really like the idea of taking time to shoot your own coin which can be tricky, paying off by hitting an enemy for sure. The coolest thing about the coin flip is that you're able to throw multiple coins and the bullet will ricochet gaining damages each time to finally hit the target with even more force. There are other mechanics like that such as the split shot which splits the bullet into multiple bullets if you hit the coin at the right time. Of course, the mechanic behaves differently depending on the gun type and the shot type. We find a similar idea in the game Reaper, but this time every bullet will ricochet on walls. A simple idea like that makes the gameplay more fun and engaging, especially for good players. It's also a clever way to add more depth to the gameplay. You basically give more choices to the player when it comes to fighting. In my game at the moment, you have the choice between firing normally, which is 
very precise but deals limited damage, or launch a rocket, which deals more damage but is less precise and uses all of your ammo. This means at all time you only have two options, and what will probably happen is you'll default to one more than the other out of habit. I added the option to shoot the rocket to hopefully make its usage a bit more interesting, but it's quite difficult to do. I should probably scale the hitbox of the rocket when it goes away from you to make it easier to hit. I wanted to add a special mechanic like that, but to be honest with you, I'd had so much stuff to do during the jam, I simply didn't have the time. I'd love to know what you think, and if you have suggestions, please let me know in the comments. I greatly encourage you to try the game on itch. I'm looking for feedback, so please let me know what you think of the game. And if you want to help me even more, there's a small form you can fill after you played. Don't worry, it's pretty short. Link in the description and on the itch page. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to the Patreon supporters for their help. I also want to thank all the viewers on Twitch that helped me make this game. Bye.